Okay, so we've renovated this property now. I would like to say there's not finishing touches to it, but I'm gonna have a little show you around and talk you through exactly what we did. So I'm gonna pop some pictures in now of what this kind of area looked like before. We basically stripped all the wallpaper and the thing with wallpaper is you just don't know what's underneath. So I spent the whole of my Easter holidays, I'm a teacher, and I painstakingly stripped all the wallpaper. I even had to stand on the banister up there to get the really high points, but I managed to do it, it took me about a week. So stripping wallpaper is labour intensive, but not a skilled job. So we made the decision that I would do that rather than paying someone. In hindsight, I think maybe we'd pay someone because it's a terrible job. When we took all the wallpaper off, the walls were in a bad condition. So for me, replastering and having fresh plaster is a no, a non-negotiable. Um, even though my partner actually wanted to just fill the cracks, I wanted the whole thing replastering. So we had everything that was old downstairs and everything that was old upstairs replastered, and that was about four thousand pounds. Um, in my eyes, £4,000 well spent. I think it just makes everything look fresh and clean. And I have done a property before and not plastered the walls. And I did regret it. So I'm glad we did that. So as we come up here, we've just whitewashed everything. Uh, we've whitewashed the banister. We've whitewashed the walls. We might get some colour on here in the future. But because we're looking to sell... I think white is just good for everybody and as we go through you can see like the neutrals that we've kept throughout so up here we've had whole new carpets there was carpet everywhere but it was old so i ripped it all up and then we put brand new carpets throughout and you'll see it's the same carpet going through and downstairs so let me take you to our first room which is the bathroom okay so i'm going to pop some old photos up somewhere around here of what the bathroom looked like before from both angles. So there was an older lady that lived here before and there was blue tiles everywhere. Me and my partner had to get out a tile chisel and chisel all the tiles off the wall and then we had to carry them all down the stairs. And we've replaced it with these big sort of uh, marble-esque tiles. So they're not marble, they're porcelain tiles. And these came in at about, I think they're about just under 20 pounds a square metre which sounds pretty reasonable, um, but when we had to buy something like 25 square metres, it cost about £400 just for the tiles. Um, we got someone to do the tiling, and that was about £1,200. That was the main expense of this bathroom. So if you want to have a look at the bath and the shower area, we replaced uh, an electric, horrible electric shower, and we've replaced it with this kind of old-fashioned brass shower, Originally, we wanted a separate shower and a separate bath, but just with the space, if you have a look round, it's quite light and airy. Um, we felt that the shower over the bath was better. We obviously want to sell to families and a bath is a bit of a non-negotiable. So the shower and the bath were actually off a, an auction site, so we kept the price down there. Um, I think the shower was about £200, the bath was about £100, and then we obviously paid our plumber and tiler to build the bath frame in. Uh, the next thing we've got to show you then is the toilet, so we've got quite an old-fashioned toilet, again we got that quite cheap, maybe £100 I think it was, and then this sink vanity, which is close the drawer, uh, this was actually a set of drawers and we got our plumber to cut a hole in it at the back here so you could actually fit a waste in and make it into a sink. So this was just a bedroom set of drawers and we've made it into a vanity. Um, we did decide whether to go through like a round bowl or a flat one, but this seemed a bit more practical. And then when we did the kitchen, we got them to cut a bit of quartz as well. So this whole vanity, tap and everything, cost about £100. Um, overall, including about £2,000 on the tile, and everything we bought, the bathroom was about four grand which I think is actually a really good price for a bathroom of this quality. If you look here, we've got the old-fashioned towel rail that sort of matches with the theme of the bathroom. Um, and when we have people round, they often comment on how light and airy the bathroom is and how nice it is. Right, so I'm going to take you through to our spare bedroom, which isn't really a bedroom. So in here, this was pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see, it's such a nice big space for a bedroom. Often in the new build properties, they are much smaller. So I'd say this is probably about one and a half times a standard bedroom in a new build property. So again, we cleared the wallpaper. Um, there wasn't much to do in here, just a replaster. We kept the old fashioned picture rail up here. 
which is what people used to use to literally hang their pictures off. And then I painted everything. So everything, the skirting, the picture rail, even the back of the door in this like creamy off-white colour. It's a Farrow and Ball match slipper satin. Um, and it just keeps the room bright and airy. It's south facing, so it gets a lot of sunlight and it's a great place to dry your washing because it gets very warm. So originally we were gonna have this as a guest room, but because there's only three bedrooms in the property, one is ours and one is the office, we've made it into kind of a wardrobe room. So we've just hung these rails in, put some shelves in, um, and made it like open shelving, open wardrobe in, and then we do have a guest bedroom, guest bed on this side for if people come and stay over. But it just keeps it spacious for us and our actual living situations. Um, we did think about having the fitted wardrobes, but they were gonna be a couple of grand. And we've spent quite a bit on this property as well. So because we're not going to stay here for that long, we didn't want to invest that in there. Okay, so let's move you over to the master bedroom. So this is our bedroom. Three sheets. Uh, in the UK, we don't get very nice weather very often, so we have to tumble dry our sheets, which means that we get these lovely creased bedding because we are not spending ages iron in our bedding. So again, in here was pretty straightforward. Take the wallpaper off, free plaster. The only thing in here that was extra was when I started taking the wallpaper off, just here in the corner, you could actually see daylight through the side of this window. So in these old properties, these bay windows are often structural. Um, and what happened is they've replaced the older window, put in a new window, obviously altering the structure, and some of the brickwork had fallen away um, and the tiles at the front. So we actually got this insulated and built out. It wasn't a particularly big job. I think it was probably an extra £100 or £200 or something. Um, throughout the property, you'll see we've got these old-fashioned radiators. Again, we bought a lot of those second-hand. They have got a few sort of chips on them at the minute, but before we sell, we're going to touch it all up. Um, and the things like the replastering of the new carpet kind of mask the fact that you've put in the older radiators. So I'm a big fan of putting in older and newer things to try and make it feel really high-end and bespoke. We've also put these... Uh, blinds in everywhere so they are venetian blinds but they kind of look a bit shuttery which is the style we're going for um throughout the property so we've got one in here one in the bathroom one in the other bedroom and one downstairs and that was about 700 pounds um so i think that's quite a good price you can't really sell a property without curtains or blinds and i think they keep the area nice and clean looking they keep in a bit of heat and they also have a bit of privacy because we are on the main road uh, the furniture we've put in um, again, we just bought second hand, that's what we bought from our old place, and this we got, my mum got for like £20, so absolute bargain, um, and it's just a lot of storage. We've also got this great big bed, thoroughly recommend a super king bed, and it's a big selling feature for the property. The rooms are so big that we can put this super king bed in and still have space, which is not something you get in a newer build. It also means we can fit a load of what we basically call our crap under the bed. Okay, so last room upstairs then is the office. I will call it a bit of a hole for the minute because it's not really been done. So this is my partner's room. Um, he's got his sort of office set up, his, his drawers, but it's not really been sorted. In fact, as I were on the conversation here, I can see he shoved a load of clothes behind this door. So this does need sorting, but it's very functional for the minute and it provides a great space. All with all the working, working from home and COVID, it's just something extra that he can sit in, it's sort of his own zone, doesn't matter if he leaves rubbish everywhere, I won't be annoyed because this is his room. So we chose to paint this a little bit different to the rest. If you want to go and now have a look, you can see we've put the darker colour and we've actually extended it up to the ceiling as well. Um, just to be a bit more homely, I think. Um, so we're going to go downstairs now. And we're going to go a bit faster than we would normally because I can hear our puppy downstairs chewing my partner's trainers. Frank! Don't think that I can't hear you. 